brought up in a family that, that had horses about and both my parents rode, so I can't remember not riding. I can remember not being very keen on riding. I can remember thinking, you know, this was, this was pretty scary and did I have to do it? But it wasn't an option and it was not until I was probably 18 that I started thinking that I'm going to make a go of it and it started to get serious. The weather in, in winter can be horrendous and you've still got to ride all the horses. They're on fitness programs, they've all got to be ridden every day. The horses have got to get outside, so what is, what is really important is to be wearing the right gear. The idea is come back warm enough and dry enough that you can carry on the day and you haven't got to permanently go inside and get changed to start again. So uh, it makes all the difference and to have that choice is, is phenomenal. I think the, the, the gear that we're able to use now, particularly for ourselves, has changed enormously. I mean, the choice now that we've got in the Musto range um, covers any eventuality. It is down to performance, it is down to you and your horse and, and getting out there, and that's really what the sport's about. It's about the endurance, attack and panache of the cross country. In eventing, we as riders, we know the dressage test, we know the cross country course, we know the show jumping course. The horse doesn't know any of it. So the horse is going blind around a cross country course and really responding to his rider. So you need a horse that is responsive, but also you know, reactive and will, will help you out of situations as well. So it requires a very special animal. The relationship the riders have with their horses is, is, a, is a very personal thing. I think some riders get much closer to their horses than others. I'm a big believer that if a horse likes working with you, that he will always try for you. So I think it's a, it is a partnership. Um, so it is, it's quite interesting. They're all so different. I love that side of it, working out which um, which horses need to do what and in our setup here horses are placed around the yard there are 24 stables and they're, they're placed in a stable that I know they they want to be there they have to like their friend next door I really enjoy that side that's a real challenge because then I feel you get the best um, out of your horse she could go for a jolly I might try on a hackamore today and very often um, your best horse is not your most talented horse. He's the one that is the best horse to work with you, the one that wants to, um, wants to do his work, enjoys his work. And that kind of comes through in the end. Those amazing freaks that do everything really easily, but actually don't really give a damn, are sometimes the most frustrating ones. Um, you know, it's the, the real triers that, that often get there. And, and I think those ones probably would come closer to my heart. It's a very labour intensive job. You know, the horses are treated as individuals. They're worked every day for between an hour to two hours and that doesn't take into account the time it takes to look after them. Whether it's shoeing, physio, vet, turnout, walker, grazing in hand, etc. It takes a lot of time. I think you're, what you're wearing in your, in your training and in your performance is, is, is vital and the, the comfort is, is important and you mustn't even be aware of what you're wearing. And I think that you know, to be able to get into the competition arena dry, warm and prepared definitely gives you an advantage over the, the poor person who has warmed up in their tailcoat or their, their jacket and is already wet through. I love what I do. Um, it's a fantastic sport. Um, it's a great way of life and I love riding horses. <laughs>